Ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel today. Well, we're going to be talking about this stuff here. Yes, this is food, more specifically wheat and rice, but we're going to be talking about food in general today. This comes off the back of the videos I've been making for you over the last couple of years. Let's get these off the desk here. Because you will recall that I've been talking about this global food crisis that started around about 2020 with all the lockdowns and other things that started to occur during that period. And we talked about how this is going to run through for a long time yet, at least 2027, if not much further into the distance. I think this is just going to continue um, to, to, to worsen actually for decades to come. Yeah, I just can't see any solution to this challenge. And one thing I want to say before we even get into all of this content, because I've got dozens of pages of notes and evidence and everything that's going on around the world with food, but I do want to address something that I keep seeing all the time in the comments and people say, oh, this guy said there was going to be a global, you know, issues with food and I haven't noticed any food. You know, I, I still get all of my food. Yeah, because the average person doesn't understand now that how supply and demand works. Actually, there is a food crisis. It's been going on for two or three. In fact, this is the three, almost four years now that this has been going on. So what happens, people say, well, my food prices have only gone up by, you know, let's say 5%, 10%. No, they haven't. They've gone up by at least 20% just over this short period. And what is supply and demand? The dynamics dictate that if prices are going up, it means that there are maybe more buyers of that product and there's perhaps a, a shortage of that product. This is just simple supply and demand. Prices go up when there's either more people or there is just a, more of a demand on that product. And the same works in reverse. If they were to grow too much food and there's the same amount of people, prices would come down to reflect the demand on that product. So what have we seen then, and I'll prove this to you right now, not that I add a huge amount of weight to the UN forecasts, but they've said that prices have increased food prices by 21% since January of 2020. Crude oil price up 13% since January of 2022. So that's just a year and a half ago. Why is this important? very simply because all of this feeds into the food problems. Crude oil feeds into the, the increase in food as well. And we won't go over all the things we've been talking about for the last two or three years because you're probably fed up of hearing it. So we'll just summarize. It was oil, it was food, it was weather, it was workers, it was restrictions and supply chain breakdowns. It was not issuing visas for seasonal workers. There was all these things going on all at the same time, which created this perfect storm. And now we're seeing all of these very, I think I'll use the word unusual weather patterns, which all of it is being blamed on global warming. Well, personally, I don't buy that explanation for a large number of reasons. I don't think within the space of a couple of years that all of this can just be happening by coincidence. And in fact, just last week, the BBC, a lot of mainstream media outlets talked about all of these wildfires. I mean, this year was extreme for wildfires. It was all blamed on climate change. But then afterwards, they put out corrections that imagine the, the main article was main front page news. The corrections were just on their website somewhere at the back. And the corrections were saying that actually most of these fires now were started by arsonists. And it's all in different countries from Spain to Greece to US. All of these wildfires that they're talking about, they're saying the majority of them, and I don't have the exact percentage, but it, from the articles I was reading, it shows it was exceptionally high, were started by arsonists. But of course, they never put that out on, in the mainstream. But there's also a lot of unusual things happening like these videos here. This weather event was a dramatic and deadly end to the Spanish summer, striking just as many people were returning to work after the holidays. The central province of Toledo was one of the worst hit areas. 
A man died after being trapped in a lift there, apparently because of the flooding. And now we've got new reports of a drought across the USA. In fact, we have the drought monitor right here. So if you are in the US, you will be able to confirm a lot better than I will. Please drop it in the comments below. And the last release was 31st of August, so just a few days ago now. And this is the drought monitor for the US. You can see some southern states have exceptional drought. That's this very dark red, almost brown patch here, uh, extreme drought in red. So what they're saying is this is one of the worst years in living memory throughout the US for drought. And we've also just had this article released in the last couple of days. And this is all about US food production. And by the way, I'd love for you to drop in the comments whether, especially if you're in the US, how accurate some of these uh, articles and some of this data is, because I often see the comments saying, I'm in Texas and it wasn't that hot this week like it said in the media. I've seen people leave comments who were in Spain and they said it was nowhere near the temperature that they said. So it says this week farmers across the Midwest are preparing for temperatures to reach 115 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 46 degrees Celsius for the UK and European people. Now they have this line here and it says according to NASA scientists, July was the hottest month ever recorded and they go on to talk about this in some other articles how this year the world broke temperature records and that in all living history temperatures have never reached that high. Now I do want to bring one point to everyone's attention here especially if you are in the UK because one thing I, I thought was really unusual was that how they said this is the hottest year on record and you know temperatures were explosive and so hot I've been in the UK this summer and I can tell you that last year was far hotter than this year, far, far hotter. So I don't really understand why they keep saying that this year was the hottest year on record and, you know, UK temperatures were broken and all these sort of things. When I remember last year, people in London were messaging and saying that the heat was so crazy throughout London and it was just unbelievable. I also remember last year there were hose pipe bans. There were bans on all sorts of things from sprinklers to, to all these other things, uh, washing your car and stuff. Well, none of that happened this year. And in fact, from looking at some of the reservoirs and looking at the imagery, they don't look to be empty like some of these reports are showing. They look to be pretty full, although I'm no expert on their reservoirs and you know their capacity and things. But they definitely don't look empty compared to what I saw last year. Now we're seeing a lot of really unusual stuff as well. And in fact, a lot of things that are gonna impact food globally. One of the big ones at the moment is India has halted their rice exports. And by the way, with the food stuff, we're gonna come back to that at the end and just I'll give you a couple of recommendations of the things that I've done. But in late July, India stopped exports of non-basmati white rice to control domestic prices. Now, this is quite significant when you think that India is one of the, well, it is the largest exporter of rice globally, just huge levels of rice, and they put a ban on their exports, which means that other countries have picked up the slack. But that's not the case all across the board. You have a number of countries that have also followed India's lead and said, we're not going to export either. So why are they saying that they are banning exports? They're saying that the high international prices are putting them off exporting, which doesn't really make sense. That to me would say that you would want to export your products if you're going to get higher prices. Geopolitical tensions and extreme climatic conditions in other rice producing countries. We've also got the issue with Russia and Ukraine ongoing and the Black Sea grain deal. We have all of these sort of um, things going on. This has definitely contributed as well to this lower amount of grains and rice in the global supply. We've also had Argentina suffered a major drought this year, affecting its soy and corn. Indonesia had temporarily banned palm oil exports. Well, let's be honest, that's no great loss. <laughs> Avoid palm oil at all costs. And we also have 9.2% of the world's population faced 
hunger in 2022. That is up 7.9% in 2019. So India actually put on these new export tariffs uh, previously, which was a 20% tax in order to reduce the amount of um, rice going out, but it didn't actually make a difference. There was a 25% growth in exports despite the tax. Now, we've also got 20 countries at the moment with food export restrictions. I mean, that is a lot. That's very unusual for 20 countries to be banning exports of their food. And it's countries from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Cameroon, Russia, Uganda. Uh, and this is quite unusual for these countries to put bans on like this. Another food staple is corn. So the Russian sanctions have had widespread impacts on everything from oil to fertilizers. We know this, we've covered it in previous videos. We also know that Ukraine is one of the leading producers of corn. But a point that we haven't seen much of is that corn has actually decreased in acreage um, over the last couple of years. It's decreased by 4%, meaning only 90 million acres of corn was planted last year. So as a result, if you think a 4% reduction, well, you're going to see an increase in prices. Cooking oil is another one we're seeing uh, reductions in at the moment and shortages. Again, we saw the shortage last year as well, because now they're using a lot of these cooking oils for biofuels and they're being pulled away from the food market. They're being used for biofuels. We're also seeing shortages on maize. We're seeing shortages on tomatoes. If you remember in July, there was 400% it was increase on tomatoes just in India. And again, this was due to irregular weather. There was fungal outbreaks throughout the regions. They've got shortages of onions and ginger and chili. Uh, lettuce, do you remember if you were in California or the US, uh, we had a 50% loss in the lettuce crop in the USA. Wheat is another one. This is mainly impacting African countries at the moment. So there's a lot of um, very serious food poverty concerns at the moment. But it's not just in these developing nations that we're talking about here. This is also in European nations. So Portugal, Spain, Italy and Greece. They are talking about fears of shortages coming up because of bad crops and extreme weather patterns this year. But some of this also comes back to EU policy and farming policy. We have six EU member states pushing for more flexibility on these environmental measures that have been passed through the farming uh, subsidy program for 2024. So a lot of farmers are not happy about this. There's also concerns over fertilizer costs being too high due to everything happening with Ukraine and Russia again, or more specifically, the sanctions on Russian fertilizers and energy that's used in Europe to produce fertilizers. So all of this is having a knock-on effect. The UAE has also now suspended rice exports. You can see where all of this is going. We keep having these stories come out as well, that things like 10 items you might not find in your grocery store going forward. Everything from sriracha to rice to wheat to corn, cooking oils. These are all popular articles that we keep seeing in the mainstream media. Champagne. Well, I'm sure we can live without that. Um, eggs, beef. Well, yeah, we know why beef. We've talked about this quite a lot with, with beef because they are reducing the livestock supply. So, of course, beef is going to become less in supply at the supermarket, but actually you're not really noticing that as much because the prices are simply going up to reflect the new supply. And this is what I think the average person doesn't understand, is that the price increases is the shortage. It is the global food shortage and the global food problems that have already started. People just can't see it yet, especially if you're in a Western nation. What happens, we simply pay more for the food. A few more statistics then, which I think are very interesting, especially as they keep talking about the year 2030. Everything's about the year 2030. A 29% increase in global drought frequency and duration since 2000, which will lead through to 2030. Estimated displacement of 700 million people worldwide by 2030. But this one goes further. It says by 2050, over 75% of the world's population will most likely be impacted by drought. 
And there's a lot of articles at the moment about water. And I don't know if you ever saw that James Bond movie where it was the, the, the resource was all about water. And I think people forget this a lot. One of the reasons I bought my new property because it had a lot of water sources, two streams, a well, you know, there's a lot of water on the property because people forget this a lot that human beings, animals, crops, we need water to survive and to flourish. And I remember all of those farms in the US, uh, orange and avocados, it was all in California. I, I remember these farms just, I was on the train one day, don't take the train through California, by the way, I was on the train one day. And apart from a group going through the carriage trying to mug people, luckily I got away, <laughs> the, as I was looking out the window, all I could see were these brown trees, orange trees and other trees that just died because there wasn't the water. It had been restricted to those regions. And it is a little bit like these dystopian movies is, is some of the things that I'm, being someone that travels quite a lot, I am seeing a lot of this at the moment. But I don't wanna take away from the importance and the significance of this rice and the wheat. That's why I showed you the rice and the, the pasta bags at the beginning, because this accounts for 42% of all calories consumed by human beings, 42%. So this is quite staggering when you think of the export bans and the loss of these crops over the last three years, consistently over the last three years. We also have the statistic that Indian white rice dominates 70% of the global trade around rice. What about water then? Well, we have all these reports of different countries that have had drought this year. Global fresh water demand expected to outstrip supply by 56% by, guess what year? Yeah, 20. 30. It talks about how so many people will have to move from where they live right now, their homes, their, these different residential areas, either into main big 15 minute cities, should we add that word in, by what year? 2030. Because they keep talking about how the infrastructure for water and the pipes, some of these pipes are losing 25% right now and the cost to repair them is too great or there's restrictions, there's uh, houses built out over the top of these pipes. There's all sorts of other things and reasons that they're giving here why people are going to have to start moving. So they're talking predominantly in this article about the European Union. People are going to have to move from outside areas where tap water is piped to them and they're going to have to start moving into these bigger cities. I, I just don't think all of this is a big coincidence as I've talked about many times with you. And we're starting to see a lot of weird stuff on government websites now um, I'm not even sure if I can talk about the topic on the channel without getting some sort of censorship. But it's worth you looking into this, um, talking about planes and trying to uh, reduce, what do they say on the government website? Reduce sunlight hitting the earth. I think that's how they phrase it, to reduce warming of the atmosphere. You know, there's a lot of weird stuff that they've said for years they haven't been doing and now they're coming out and saying, oh, we have, but this is the reason why. A lot of unusual things going on right now. But I think one of the main stories I've found today, which again is not really being talked about too much, is the fact that the bee colonies are dying out in massive numbers. And most of the articles again blame it on climate change. They're saying it's too hot for the bees to fly and you know, weird stuff like that. Yeah, or, or maybe it's the fact that there's so much pesticides being used now maybe that's killing the bees. There's a lot of different theories around this, but bees are pollinators, we need bees. You know, there's all these things going on right now that you've just gotta pay attention to. But more importantly, just broadly prepare. So just a couple of things that I've done, I've always got food stocked. I've always got things like the staples, rice and, and pasta and, and other things like that, always. And it never goes to waste. This stuff, even though it has an expiry date on, it doesn't really expire like they say it does. This stuff lasts for a long time, especially if you seal it properly, you store it properly, um, airtight, mylar bags. It's worth you learning this sort of stuff. Start looking at some of the prepping forums as well. Know you're not a tin hat person for being a prepper, which I, again, I see all these weird, weird comments. Human beings have been preparing and prepping for as long as time began. We didn't used to have you know, a supermarket that you could just walk to or drive to uh, in, in five minutes and just get fr fresh 
produce all year round. This is all the result of oil and globalization, which has made these, uh, which has enabled these things to be possible. So use the food, uh, rotate through it. If you've got some that you know you're not gonna use, you can donate it to the food bank. It's not going to go to waste, but I I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna change the mind of certain people who live in the big cities and just walk to the store every day. Yeah, maybe you won't see food shortages, it's possible. But I can guarantee you if you don't see shortages, you're gonna see increases in prices. I can almost guarantee you of that because that is how this works. The food goes to the richer countries who can afford it and the poorer people, and it's happened throughout history, are the ones that suffer in developing nations. So if you've got any tips that you want to share as well or comments, just drop them below this video. And apart from that, thank you so much for watching and being a subscriber here. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you with the next video.